I've had a lot of interest in the monster wagon video I made last year so I decided to make a companion video. The original video was meant for kind of friends and family. I didn't expect so many people to show interest. So for those who've had questions and those who've watched the video, here's a little more detail about how the monster wagon works, especially in the steering and suspension department. <clears throat> the chassis of the monster wagon is independent of the tub. The tub is simply a seat. It sits on top of the wagon and the chassis itself is self-sustained. It'll roll around and, and work without the wagon on top of it. It uh, structurally is comprised of a belly pan and then kind of this backbone up here as the main chassis. Everything attaches to that in one way or the other. Uh, the rear swing arm is attached to the, the belly pan. Uh, the trailing arms are attached uh, via these little T-arms to the backbone. Uh, the rear shock is attached to the backbone as well. Um, coming up here to the front, the front tub is bent upwards. Uh, it is not bent straight upwards. It does have a slight tilt back to it, um, which does cause the suspension arms to be slightly not quite in line. Didn't really matter. Um, I wasn't worried too much about all of these angles, as you will find listening through my video that I am no mathematician. Uh, I make this stuff up as I go. Uh, speaking of which, let's go right into what I made up as I went. We'll start up here at the front. The pipe that the handle connects to is simply that a pipe. It is threaded into what is actually a projector bracket. I worked in the audio video industry and so I actually had a spare projector bracket laying around. So this piece here is the projector bracket and it serves as my hinge. All it really is is a U-shaped piece of metal attached to the chassis. I actually bolted it in here with another U-shaped piece slid inside of it with a pin here and a pin here and that is just uh, the hinge that I used it's something I had laying around so I cheated there I did not have to fabricate that pivot here's another look at it it's kind of neat because it does have this open hole here where you can actually put a bolt in there uh, if you put a nylon washer on that bolt it actually will give some added resistance as you turn um, I have that on the top. I didn't put one on the bottom. I actually didn't notice till now that it was on the bottom. The rod then is connected by a very basic simple U-bolt to the tie rods. The tie rods are off of a Polaris snowmobile, I believe. Um, just some spare parts I had laying around. Um, as are these rods, these suspension rods. Anybody with a Polaris snowmobile will recognize the trailing arm, which is what I built. I actually used another one of those same rods, those same snowmobile rods that I used for the suspension of the tie rod here. I then welded a pipe to make it stiffer and longer and brought it out to here, which then I welded to this piece of angle iron. So I have a nice weld right here, and then across and around, making this and this one piece. Okay. So that will make it so that this angle iron is fixed forward and back. It cannot move forward and back because this rod is holding it. But it can move in and out, up and down, and in all other directions. So in order to stabilize that, we have these two rods here and here. These two rods affix this plate which is attached to that trailing rod to this plane it cannot twist it cannot move in and out now it can only move up and down so that gives us our suspension movement we're held forward and back by the rod going down and we're held in and out by these two rods and prevented from twisting 
then we have the steering rod here that up to the U-bolt. That is everything that is coming down to here. This plate has affixed to it two more pieces of angle iron here and here. These are the bracket for my spindle to slide into. My spindle is simply a piece of pipe with another, I believe brass or copper, I can't remember, piece of pipe inside used as a bushing. There's the proper word, sorry. That bushing is slightly longer than the pipe, than the spindle. Um, and that way when you put this bolt in here, this bolt you see the nut on the bottom, uh, and clamp it down, it clamps down on the bushing, allowing the tiniest bit, and I don't even think we'll feel it here, of slop. So that this pipe, the spindle pipe, is not pinched. It can then move freely on the bushing. Um, the bushing does have lube on it. I believe I just used some wheel bearing grease um, so that it moves uh, fairly smoothly. Then to this spindle pipe, I built the rest of my spindle. I welded a flat piece of metal out for my tie rod to bolt to, and that is what the tie rod moves in order to turn the wheel. And then here I welded a bolt, just a large bolt that I could place this nut on. The wheels I bought have their own bearings inside, so the bolt does not need to spin. The wheel takes care of all that. So that is how I homemade the spindle. Then from our tie rods we come back up to our main steering rod here. I use this U-bolt as I pointed out earlier. and. One thing that I like about this design is if we look at it, let's look at it from down here, you'll notice that the suspension arms and the tie rod are not parallel. And what I found is as the suspension moves through its travel, everything changes in distance. So the distance from here to here, for example, changes. So what that does is as you go through the suspension travel, it'll cause the wheel's toe to change in relative to each other. And so you might have zero toe or the tires perfectly parallel with each other um, in a resting position, but then as the suspension goes through, the tires will be pushed or pulled inward and outward because the angle is wrong. Now, what ended up working out really well is using this U-bolt I can slide these up and down and that effectively changed how that toe worked and so I moved it in and out. I originally started with it I believe a little farther down and when it's farther down it takes more travel to turn the wheel but um, it also changes the angle. These rods become a little longer because this point they don't actually physically become longer, but it feels like it because this point is closer than this point is. So when I moved from here to here, I changed my toe. But just changing the toe doesn't change all the angles. So you can't simply thread the rod is what I'm saying. Threading the rod to change the toe doesn't change the angle, but moving the bolt does. So by use, moving the U-bolt out, I can change how the tire tracks through the travel. I was able to come up with a fairly happy medium. As far as the rest of the chassis goes, can't think of too many other tricks I had. Um, as I built the rear suspension, I ended up originally laying the shock down too flat, meaning that this angle was too similar to the angle of the swing arm. And that changes the progressiveness of the spring. Um, it also, um, what was my problem before? I'm trying to remember as I speak to you. Anyway, I originally used, I can't remember what the problem was. I believe it was actually going over center. That's what the problem was, is when, this, when the swing arm completely bottomed out, it could actually get to the point where it went over center, meaning that the shock compressed all the way and then started to extend again as the as the swing arm bottomed out. 
So I had luckily made myself a nice bracket here and uh, had three holes to choose from. Originally I had it in the tallest position which lifted the wagon up, made it taller, uh, gave it longer suspension travel, but also caused it to be able to go over center. I ended up settling for the lowest setting which uh, makes it impossible for it to go over center and uh, made it so that the spring was slightly less progressive and it, it's progressive in a bad way um, the shock actually does need to be even steeper than this it's just too darn long I got the wrong shock I believe for this application um, the progressiveness that I have is it's stiffest at first and gets slightly softer as it goes through the travel because this and this are becoming closer to parallel as it goes through the travel they begin as out of parallel and then slowly parallel up as it goes through the travel um, so I would have probably done that a little bit differently uh, given the chance again I probably would have actually had this mount be down here um, facing forward instead of pointing up um, which would have dropped the back of the shock more and change that angle um, but I just ran out of room and didn't need to redesign the whole thing I was running out of time for the kids this Christmas so that was a mistake on my part I actually made a similar mistake up front um, originally let me find the right angle originally these were not as long as well which put my front shocks being mounted up higher and that caused the same problem where it could go over center so I ended up actually knocking the original mounts off and welding these longer ones on to then make my front shocks be uh, at a steeper of an angle. And honestly, once again, they should probably be a little steeper than what I made them. Um, if I had it to do again, I actually probably would have brought this point out, which would have brought the shock more upright. It also would lift the wagon as you go through the travel, but as you see, I actually already have a drop bracket um, in order to lift the wagon as it is. So what should have probably happened is I should have had this upper mount come out farther, not had a drop bracket, and had this mounting point be maybe more up here. So once again, I uh, made a few mistakes on it, but I did make it up as I went. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them. I'll try to answer them as I can. I hope this does answer some questions. I'm sorry that I don't have very many proper terms. Like I said, I'm just some dude in a garage kind of winging this stuff. But uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I know there's a lot of guys out there doing the same stuff. So if I can help you, I will. Feel free to ask, and I'll give it my best shot. Thanks for watching.